Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. BQ has sent us over some PLA HR. They had a little challenge going on that if I can design an airless basketball that they would send me a roll of PLA HR. So that's exactly what I did. I designed a little mini airless basketball. For that reason, they sent over this nice spool of BQ PLA HR in orange. And I haven't opened it yet, and I'm actually really looking forward. Man, that's a really nice orange. I am really looking forward to getting this thing started. I haven't decided which of these two BQ build plates I'm going to be using on one of the A1s over here for this print, but I'm going to check it all out on their website, and we'll get it started. This filament is actually supposed to make 3D prints bounce, especially a basketball, like the one that I 3D printed, and it's currently on my Maker World, so if you guys are interested to download it and use it for yourself, you totally can. I do have a PETG profile on there, but now that we have this opened up, I'm going to get this printed and see how it works on my mini airless basketball. I may have forgot to mention that it's free. Please go ahead and check out my Maker World and download your free airless basketball model. So let's take a look and see if this thing will actually bounce or if it's just going to be a flop. All right, guys, so I took it out of the bag and right away, you can tell it's already flexy and I never printed with TPU, but I would imagine it feels similar. I can bend it all the way and it just comes right back. That's pretty cool. All right, don't judge me. I'm going to sniff it. It's like a new car in a science fair had a baby. Now that's a win. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to actually dry this stuff. I don't think BQ actually mentions that you got to dry this stuff, but I'm going to dry it. And not with a hair dryer or anything like that. Let me show you. We got the iBoss Polyphemus over here, and this will definitely do the trick. So I'm just going to turn it on. I'm going to leave it at the PLA setting, which seems to be at 80 degrees Fahrenheit for four hours. So I'm just going to pop it in just like that. Oh, and you know what? I totally forgot to mention that we need to open this guy so that the humidity can escape as well as turn on the roller. So what that's going to do is as this thing's drying, it's slowly going to be turning the entire time. While the filament's getting its beauty sleep, let me show you the 3D model that started all this. This is my mini airless basketball designed in Maya, and it's currently up on Maker World if you want to give it a shot yourself. I mimicked what I'd see a regular basketball have, which is kind of like this protrusion coming out as it reaches these thread lines over here. It's got this wild honeycomb pattern, so you don't have to worry about inflation. All right, guys, to make things a little easier, I just went ahead and typed in BQ Airless Basketball over here, and I think this is the one that they recommended on their website. So I'm just going to go ahead and do download and open. And like this, I can see all the settings that they had adjusted and I'm just going to apply it to the model file that I already have because I already painted on my supports for my ball. So I think this would be the fastest and easiest way to do it. While this thing's slicing, keep in mind that this is a mini airless basketball. It's at about a 50% decrease in size from a regular basketball. It's going to take about 9 hours and 31 minutes, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this turns out. All right, guys. Well, first things first, got to get that BQ Glacier on there. I really do love these BQ Glacier build plates. They're really cool. It's called a Cryogrip Pro Glacier. So I'm gonna get this on there. Simple as that. But we do wanna make sure that it's straight. There you go. And there's two more things we need to do before I get this printed out. Number one, you gotta get that PLAHR out of the spa and we need to load it up onto this A1. And we can't forget, we gotta switch out that nozzle for the 0.6 millimeters, which I just so happen to have in a toolbox. I think it's supposed to say A1. If you guys remember from my last video, this was printed out in the Ujoy biofilament, and I am really pleased with this filament. But let's go ahead and grab that 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And I do want to turn this thing off so I don't burn my fingers. But I don't know if you guys remember, back in the day, to take out a nozzle, you have to unscrew it. And I don't know how many people did it, but I did it a hundred times. I burned my fingers. All right, guys, first things first, we got to take off this plate. Then we take off that silicone sleeve, then undo this clip here. And just to make sure I don't burn myself, I'm gonna use this here to pull it out. All right, then I got the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. We just pop that in. And in fact, this is gonna be the first time I ever used it. I'm actually really excited for that. Then we're just gonna pop on the sleeve, just like that. Then the cap. I like to start from the top and clip it into place. All right guys, so now that the thing is on, I do wanna make sure to run a calibration on it so that it's adjusted for the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I'm gonna show you how to do that right here. All right guys, we're just gonna click settings over here. We're gonna go over to maintenance and we're just gonna do calibration and I'm just gonna run all three. I'll see you guys back here when this thing is done. All right, so the calibration is complete and now let's get this filament loaded. All right, little buddy, spa day is over and we're gonna get this PLAHR on there and print it out. I am really excited for this. The first time I'm doing anything different 
other than PLA and PETG. So it's like a TPU type of material. Hopefully it prints and does its thing. Come on. I'm waiting for it to come through. It hasn't come through yet, but hopefully it does. All right, guys, it's a success. It wasn't coming out for a little while, so I was getting a little worried, and I kept having to press retry, but it's slowly but surely being extruded out, as you can tell. And boy, am I happy about that. I think it's safe to say I can click done. And it's just purging out whatever's in there and we'll get the print started. I did make sure to change the filament to TPU, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and get this ball printed. Just click print and I'll show you when the first layers start coming out. All right, it is honestly looking really nice. So nice, I kind of want to lay down on it, but I don't think I'd fit. But here, let me show you. Guys, it doesn't get much better than that. Let me see if I can zoom you guys in here. That is looking real, real nice. So this print's got a while to go. And once it finishes up, I'll show you guys the results. And I think, I just might think that there's going to be a little bit of a hard time taking off the supports, but We'll see you when the time arrives. See you then. All right, guys. Finally, for the big reveal, it's finished. And as you can see, it's actually pretty small. Compared to my hand, it's actually pretty small. And I thought it was going to be a lot more flexible, but it's actually a little on the stiffer side. But as you can tell, there is some give. So I'm going to go ahead and take this thing off. I've been hearing everywhere that this thing is really hard to take off the build plate. So hopefully I won't be needing a protein shake after. All right, guys. So I haven't touched it. It's cooled off for quite some time. I'm kind of wondering if I could just take it off like this. No, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to actually try to... Nope, that ain't happening either. That is stuck on there extremely well. And I don't know how I'm going to take it off, but we'll figure it out. This is the big problem with these things I hear. Oh, actually, wow, that is really satisfying. I'm gonna bring you guys in for that. That is coming off so smoothly, but those are just the edges. So let's see, once we get to the support material, it might be a little harder. I'll be honest, guys, I have never worked with a material like this, so it feels really strange in a good way. Like it's flexible, but it's stiff. It's very smooth. I'm just trying to take this off as carefully as I can i've been hearing everywhere that this stuff is a little hard to remove there's the build plate we got a little bit here and there but not a whole lot and this is the real tough part taking off the supports i'm probably going to have to use some pliers for this all right guys so the good part is that when i squeeze it with pliers it actually starts to bend and come off slowly ever so slowly but it is a difficult process that is for sure. And I don't want to sit here and bore you guys as I do this, but I want to show you just how difficult it can be. And my hope is that this ball stays intact by the time I'm done with it. All right, there you go. Just grab some pliers and yank. Oh man, I thought it was going to be a lot harder, but that's not bad at all. If you think about it, that's pretty good. That came off fairly easily. So I'm going to toss this and kind of want to take a sander to this and maybe sand it down a little bit because it is a little fuzzy. All right, guys, I'm just going to skip the idea of the sander. It's actually really cool and light. I'll be honest though, my BQ logo with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle didn't quite come out as I expected. It's a little blurry, but hey, I think if you were to use that 0.4, which I've test printed one of these in PETG with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and it came out, except when I bounced it, it broke. So let's try. Whoa. It didn't break. Hoo -hoo. Let me show you. All right, here we go. Hey, what do you know? Super cool. Wow. I am loving this. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I came outside. <laughs> I want to see if this thing bounces and it does. It's so nice. I got to show you. All right, guys. So here we go. The bounce test. And then you could tell it's a small little ball. And that thing bounces nicely. I feel like there are some areas, though, where it doesn't bounce as well like that one but and that one but that one bounced really good i don't know why it does that perhaps because of the rough texture i'm not sure like the little fuzz that i should probably sand off but as you can tell this thing is bouncing and look it's flexible that's so cool nice now i kind of want to throw it up against the wall and see what happens all right guys here we go i'm gonna throw it up against the wall <laughs> That is sweet, super fun. And I like that it's small and you could just grip it like this. I love that. So if you guys are interested in this, it's on my make world now. It's a smaller version, but as you can tell, you can just go and 3D print the big one if you want after you get the PLA HR. So I'm gonna see you back 
in the 3D printer room. Hey guys, one other thing I wanted to mention was that you can print out one of these balls with the extra filament that's left over if you guys choose to print out a full-size ball. So this full-size ball will leave you with a little bit of extra filament, not enough for another full-size ball, but it will give you enough filament to print out one of these. So this is that mini airless basketball on my maker wall. So BQ PLAHR, some pretty cool stuff. Definitely more flexible and bouncy than PLA and PETG. Those just break. This stuff bounces. A huge thank you to BQ for sending over this PLAHR and for giving me a reason to try something new. Again, if you guys want to try the mini airless basketball, it's up on my maker world right now, linked in the description below. There's also a couple of other cool free models you could find on there to download, print, and have fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to get notified on more cool stuff coming your way. Let me know if you guys tried it out. Would love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. 3D Theory here. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.